A lot of people would have you believe the Earth is round. Well, we'll see. What is the Flat Earth Theory? Well, the Flat Earth Theory posits... Let me stop you right there. The Flat Earth is not a theory, and doesn't posit anything besides demonstrable, empirical, objective facts. For example, it is a fact, not a theory, that bodies of water always seek and find their own level, from a beaker, a bottle, or a bathtub, to a pond, lake, or an ocean. The natural physics of water and other liquids is to find and remain level. It is an unproven, unscientific theory with no observable, measurable, or repeatable evidence to claim that bodies of water can somehow bend, cling to the exterior of shapes, and show convexity upon their surface. It is a fact that the majority of Earth is covered in such level water, thus making it an unscientific theory to postulate that Earth is actually a gigantic sphere with bendy oceans curving all the way around it. It is a fact, not a theory, that the horizon always appears perfectly flat, 360 degrees around the observer, regardless of altitude. All amateur balloon, rocket, plane, and drone footage show a completely flat horizon, as high as we can reach, over 20 miles, or 120,000 feet up. The only time the horizon ever bends is when viewed through a fisheye lens, or a curved commercial airplane window. It is also a fact that the horizon always rises to the eye level of the observer as altitude is gained, so you never have to look down to see it. If the Earth were in fact a globe, no matter how large, as you ascended, the horizon would stay fixed, and the observer would have to tilt looking down further and further to see it. It is a fact, not a theory, that we are able to observe objects at incredibly long distances, far beyond what would be possible if Earth were a globe 25,000 miles in circumference, as we're told. For example, it is a fact that in Genoa, Italy, from just above sea level, on clear days, it is possible to see the distant islands of Elba, Gorgona, Caprea, and Corsica 80 to 125 miles away. It is a necessary theory that the globe Earth must curve 8 inches per mile squared if it really be a ball 25,000 miles in circumference. But based on such a theory, these islands would all be completely hidden behind thousands of feet of curved Earth. In fact, the record-breaking longest-distance zoom photograph ever taken recently showed Peak Gaspard from Peak de Finestrels a whopping 275 miles away, at a height of under 10,000 feet, where, based on correct curvature calculations, the entire mountain should be invisible behind several miles of curved Earth. It is an observable, testable, repeatable, scientific fact of reality that Polaris, the North Pole Star, situated perfectly over the North Pole center of Earth, never moves a single inch, night after night, year after year, century after century, with all the other fixed stars remaining fixed in their relative constellations revolving perfect circles around Polaris. It is an unobservable, unproven, unscientific theory to claim that thousands of years ago Polaris mysteriously did move, and Thuban, or other stars, became the center of rotation. It is also an unobservable, unscientific theory to claim that the Earth is spinning a thousand miles per hour around an axis, while rotating tens of thousands of miles per hour around the Sun, while the entire solar system circles hundreds of thousands of miles per hour around the Milky Way and the Milky Way shoots millions of miles per hour more off through infinite space, when we cannot see, hear, feel, or otherwise observe or prove any such motion. And we can see clearly for ourselves Polaris never moving and all the other stars revolving around it. Not only that, but such circular star trails around an unmoving pole star prove that it is the stars themselves moving and not the Earth. If the Earth were truly a tilting, wobbling, spinning space ball undergoing these multiple contradictory motions through the universe, you would only see irregular, spiral-shaped star trails, and the night sky would never be the same twice. It would be impossible for constellations to exist whatsoever if Earth were truly undergoing these various theoretical motions. And those are just a few of the countless, observable, testable, repeatable, scientific facts of our level, motionless, plain Earth that have been marginalized, suppressed, and ridiculed for centuries in favor of various unobservable, untestable, 
unscientific theories purporting we live on a tilting, wobbling, spinning ball. The Earth is not a globe, as you have come to know it, but is in fact a flat disc-like shape. It's kind of a lot like this. Yeah. It suggests that the Earth's land masses lie flat. And to better understand this, let's go all the way back to the Bedford Level experiment with Samuel Burley Robeth. So let's go to the chalkboard in the Bedford Level experiment. Sir Samuel Burley Robethan, don't know if that's how it's pronounced, kicked off this whole flat earth thing with the Bedford Level experiment. Samuel Robotham was a prominent and vocal flat earth proponent in the 19th century, but he certainly didn't kick off this whole flat earth thing. From the beginning of recorded history, and for thousands upon thousands of years, cultures across the entire world all believed the Earth was flat. The cosmology of literally every pre-Copernican culture, besides a few ancient Greek philosophers, described a stationary plain Earth, and not a spinning ball. What he did is he started on a long river, and he stood here, this is him, with a telescope, and he had his friend in a boat ride a number of miles down the river. So this was what he was suggesting. Because of the curve of the globe, he shouldn't be able to see his friend after about six miles. The top of the sail should have been about 11 feet under his view, but he saw his friend go like more than six miles. The whole time he saw the whole boat and the whole thing just like this. That led him to thinking that Earth is not a globe. Samuel Robotham was already well aware that Earth was flat and motionless. His Bedford Level experiments, there were many actually, were designed to demonstrate this fact. He conducted several experiments using telescopes, spirit levels, and theodolites, special precision instruments used for measuring angles in horizontal and vertical planes. By positioning them at equal heights, aimed at each other successively, he proved over and over the Earth to be perfectly flat for miles without a single inch of curvature. Robotham's findings, beginning with his 1864 book, Earth Not a Globe, an experimental inquiry into the true figure of the Earth, proving it a plane without axial or orbital motion and the only material world in the universe, caused quite a stir in the scientific community, and thanks to three decades of his efforts and those of his colleagues in the Universal Zetetic Society, the shape of the Earth became a hot topic of debate around the turn of the 19th century. And this is where people kind of hit the wall on the flat earth thing. Where's the edge? Wonderful question. I've got answers. This is essentially what the, the shape of the flat earth looks like. And of course, if these are the edges, your next question would be like, well, why haven't we fallen off? Well, that brings me to the ice wall. Once you got the land masses, and they're all there, they have this ice wall. And so, this is what they believe it looks like. So you got your Canada, US, uh, Mexico, there's South America in there, and then, then uh, Russia, the other big old land mass. They believe that the, the Antarctic surrounds the Earth. It is a fact, not a belief, that if you travel southwards from anywhere on Earth, keeping the pole star exactly 180 degrees to your back, you will arrive in Antarctica. The vast majority of Antarctica's coastline is raised significantly above the water level, usually around 100 to 200 feet, thus why it is sometimes referred to as an ice wall. And keeps the water in between the ice mass, just like this. Look at that. These are the principles of the Flat Earth Society. Honestly, seeing it like this, it's not so crazy. You joke, but this model of contained level water is actually a legitimate demonstration of our objective reality. Ball that Plato up into a spherical Earth and pour that water on. Now which one is the joke? Ballers will retort that gravity magically causes water to stick to and curve around such balls, but try as they might, they cannot reproduce this claim on a scalable model, so we just have to trust them. We understand the ice walls, we got all that figured out. You might say, what about the seasons? This is the most enjoyable part of the Flat Earth theory. It is actually suggested that the sun spins around the Earth. I'm actually doing the opposite of that, but you know, give me a break. The seasons changing when the sun is closer and further from the Earth. The seasons are not directly caused by the sun changing in altitude, but by the sun's changing its position and speed. Each year, the sun begins its journey at the Tropic of Capricorn at the winter solstice, where it makes its fastest and largest circle over the Earth. For the next three months, every day, the sun slightly narrows its path and slows its speed until by the spring equinox, the sun has spiraled its way from the Tropic of Capricorn to the equator. 
Then, for the next three months again, every day, the sun continues to slightly narrow its path and slow its speed until the summer solstice, when the sun makes its smallest, slowest circle around the Tropic of Cancer. Once the sun reaches this innermost circle, like the ribbons and dancers around a maypole, the sun then begins its opposing, widening, quickening journey back to the Tropic of Capricorn. For the next three months, every day the sun slightly widens its path and hastens its speed until the autumnal equinox, the sun has spiraled its way from the Tropic of Cancer back to the equator. Then for the next three months, again, every day, the sun continues to slightly widen its path and hasten its speed until the winter solstice, when the sun again makes its largest, fastest circle around the Tropic of Capricorn, and the annual journey recommences. Um, so that's good. So, okay, so they believe in gravity. So we're good. No, they don't. Gravity is a hoax. We all stay here, not because of gravity, but because the Earth and the Sun are constantly and ever moving upward, like a tower of terror that you can never get off. This complete nonsense is just not true. Literally, no flat earther in history ever believed or even presented this ridiculous theory until it was included on the farcical, satirical, controlled opposition Flat Earth Society website in the early 2000s. I have not found a single flat earther outside of the Flat Earth Society who believes or promotes that misinformation, and the thousands of flat earthers on my channel will back me up on this. Please comment below if anyone actually believes Earth is an upward accelerating disk. This brings me to photographs. So you're saying, I've seen photos of the Earth. It looks like a sphere. It's very circular. Why haven't these flat Earth people seen the photos either? Well, they have. But those photos were taken by NASA. This is a quote pulled from the Flat Earth Society's website. In general, we at the Flat Earth Society do not lend much credibility to photographic evidence. It is too easily manipulated and altered. That is where me and them connect. And on the whole, the Flat Earth Society doesn't believe anything that NASA says or does. Once again, this deep researcher references the single website on the very top result of every Google Flat Earth search, the Flat Earth Society, a farcical, satirical site which is constantly exposed and debunked by genuine Flat Earthers, including the original, actual society of Flat Earthers known as the Universal Zetetic Society, and its successor, the International Flat Earth Research Society. BuzzFeed, of course, doesn't bother researching or mentioning these groups and their publications, because, like most people, they're only interested in mainstream edutainment, and just assume, if it's not on Wikipedia, or the first page of Google's biased search results, then it must not be real. <laughs>